Hey guys, I am back. So today I'm going to be talking about uh, spectroscopy. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. I, I could be getting the uh, name wrong. However, it's going to be basically how you can tell what a light, uh, what a element is based on the light that's emitted, and sort of the concepts behind that is more why I'm doing it. It's, it's for the concepts. So, um, what is this? Well, basically, the the thing is this: if you have an element, right, and it has a unique set of characteristics, and you need to determine which element it is. One method you can do this is by taking the light that comes off of it, and you get something that sort of looks like this, right? It's a chart with specific wave bands. Now, you notice that all elements charts are going to be different, and that the, the bands are going to be in different places for different elements. Okay? So, I'm going to explain how this works and what, what's the deal. Okay? So, the way it works is that you have, a, you have an element. You, Okay, we're going to say an atom. This atom has a um, nucleus, which, is, which are protons and neutrons. And, and comparatively in the size, a proton and neutron are much bigger than an electron. However, the atom is a whole size. The electrons orbit really far from the protons and neutrons. So we're just going to represent the nucleus by a dot here um, because the electrons are going to orbit so far that it's sort of like looking at the sun from, you know, Jupiter or whatever, it's going to look like a small dot. So, um, and you have the electrons, and you know the electrons orbit in shelves, and each shelf is compared to the energy level. So you have electron shelf one, which is a low energy electron, you have, you know, shelf two, shelf three, four, five, all the way up to nine, ten, you know, I'm not sure how high it goes, it could go up to infinity. But the thing to realize is that the higher shelf, the higher energy level. And so basically what happens is this, is that when an element has more electrons, you know, there's only a certain amount of uh, slots or, or places, spaces in each shelf. So once the spaces in each shelf, uh, which refer to basically a quantum um, wave pattern, where the electron can be, so basically once all the spaces in the shelf are filled up, then the electrons have to move to the next shelf where there are more spaces and, and so on and so forth. Now, um, another way that electrons will move up shelves is when there is more energy added because the higher shelf is higher energy. And they'll move down shelves when energy is decreased. So, what happens is energy, I'm talking about in the form of photons or electromagnetic radiation. So, say we take a, um, you know, we have a regular element here with some random pattern of electrons. I'm not going to, you know, it, this may not be a real element. It may be. It's just demonstration purposes. So it, ha it has some electrons, right? And we bombard it with high energy, high energy light, right? It's important to realize that light, its energy is totally a function of its wavelength. So the higher the frequency of the light, the higher energy light. The lower fre frequency of the light, the lower energy light. So radio waves, pretty weak. Visible light, it's in the middle. Uh, you know, X-rays, gamma rays, up at the top, very energetic. So the higher the frequency, the shorter the wavelength of the light, the more energy it is. That's the only thing that determines the energy of the light. That's it. So we pump in some light from, you know, all, all from energies, and then these, this light will get absorbed by the, photo, uh, by the electrons, excuse me. And so say we pump in the light from all the spectrum, the whole spectrum, to be, uh, just to include everything, right? So this means we're putting in light from all energies, right? From the top to the bottom of the spectrum, right? And so what's going to happen is that since there's only a specific amount of shelves, right? It's not like you can, the electron can be, you know, anywhere in a range, right? Like you can have a, a slider on your stereo be anywhere in the range. They can only be at specific shelves, more like those, those clicker like the clicker volume thing on your iPod, your volume can only be at specific levels instead of a varying continuous level. So that means that the electrons can only have a specific level of energy, right? The energy of the electron can't vary because there's only a set shelf here, here, and here. So um, basically your electron has to have a set energy. Basically energy is quantized. Quantized means specific quantities. So like the clicker on your iPod where you know there's only volume at specific points. There's only energy at specific points. That means that the electron, you know, can jump up to this shelf or it can jump up to the next shelf based on the energy that's added. However, it can't go anywhere in between. So that means that 
if you have a specific amount of electrons, right, you know, electrons in shelf one or whatever, and they're bombarded by this energy, they, they're going to only take up the certain energy that they need to get to another shelf, to get to the next shelf, to get to two shelves up, to get to three shelves up, okay? So that means that they're going to leave the rest of the light because the rest of the light doesn't allow them to get to a shelf. It would put, their, put them somewhere in between. So the electrons are only going to take up the light they need, basically. They're only going to absorb the photons of the specific wavelength that get them to the shelf, to the next shelf up. Okay, they can go more than one shelf up at a time if the, energy, uh, if the photons are energetic enough. But that means that every time you bombard a certain element with wavelengths, the electrons are only going to absorb the specific wavelength that they need to get up to the next shelf because energy is quantized, right? That means that every single time there's going to be, if you, if you take a detector, there's going to be absences in the little point, there's going to be little like black bars um, in the light um, table for, for the whole frequency because the light, that light will have been absorbed by the electrons that, which used it to get to the uh, upper shelf. So that's one way to do it. And, since each element has its own unique electron configuration, right? So there, you know, hydrogen has one electron in shelf one, I believe. It's gonna, you know, this electron is gonna jump up to shelf two and only absorb a very specific wavelength, whereas uranium has, you know, a hundred, I don't even know, 80 electrons maybe? I'm not quite sure, but those electrons are only gonna jump up at specific shelves and they're only gonna absorb specific wavelengths. So since each element has its own unique electron configuration, each element is going to absorb its own unique spectra of light. So there's going to be, for each element, it's going to have its own unique place where the light is essentially missing because it was absorbed by the electrons to move up to the next energy level. So that's one way of identifying an element based on the light it produces. The other way is sort of the reverse, is that once the, once, you know, so th this way would work is you have the light coming in and an element and then a detector and then you see, you know, light, light of all energy levels, of all wavelengths, so not necessarily visible, and a detector, and you see which, which um, frequencies are missing, and, and since each element is only going to absorb specific frequencies, the electrons are only going to jump up to specific levels, that means it's unique, like a fingerprint. Each, each fingerprint is unique. Each element has its own unique spectra of light that it absorbs because it, each element has its own unique electron configuration. Now you can also do the reverse, essentially when you shine light onto it, um, photons that get absorbed, the electrons are going to jump up to a higher energy level. Uh, this means that they're in an ex excited state. So if they're normally at, at level two, because level one is full in the element, and they jump up to level you know, eight or whatever, um, that means that they're more energetic than normal. So that means that, that they're going to you know, they want to drop down to their regular energy level. And when they're going to do this, they're going to release photons, essentially. So they're going to release photons of the specific energy level that they need to get down to the shelf that they're normally at. And since energy level in photons is completely determined by the frequency of the photon, they're going to emit a very specific frequency every single time. So you can essentially do the reverse and see when you shine powerful light onto it, powerful photons, electromagnetic radiation, and they're gonna, the electrons are gonna jump up a level, and then when you stop, the electrons are gonna fall down to their original shelves, and in doing so, they have to get rid of the extra energy level, because remember, they gained energy from the photons coming in. That gained energy transfers them up to a higher shelf, and to go back to a lower shelf, they have to lose energy, so they emit a photon of a very specific frequency, because the shelves are determined energy levels. And then, um, once they do that, that, that specific frequency you can then, you know, get in a detector and then you can s then sense each element, you know, the electrons are going to jump up to specific shelves because each shelf has its own energy level. You can see that the light emitted then is going to correspond to an element because it, the, the light that's emitted is going to be corresponded to the missing bars in the method we showed earlier. So these two methods really can be used interchangeably except for the fact that the results you get are inverted. So um, for the first one, um, it's going to be which lights are absorbed, and in the second one, the places where the light used to be absorbed is now going to be a little, a little patch of light where the rest is nothing because that's the same energy of light that it, it used to go back to its original energy level. So that's the way it works. That's the way the second method works, is you see the, light, the uh, frequency of light that's emitted when it goes down to its original energy level. You detect that, and you're going to see you're going to get a specific uh, spectra of light that way. Um, which is going to sort of be the inverse of the spectra of light you get for the first method. Um, however, they're both equally applicable. As you can see, they work on the same fundamental principles. 
um, principles that you know the uh, electron energy is quantized and that light, uh, the frequency of light, is uh, totally determines the energy level. So um, hope you enjoyed learning how that works. Um, uh, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, post them in the comments.